Welcome to the Howl Business Beat, where we delve deep into the dynamic world of entrepreneurship, innovation, workforce, talent, economic development, and much more, bringing you the latest insights and strategies to thrive in today's competitive business landscape. Join us as we interview industry leaders and explore the trends shaping the future of commerce. Today, we're joined by Julia Keiter, Director of Employee Development at Baker College, and Jennifer Slater, HR Director at Action Traffic Maintenance, to discuss all things HR and business, and a great local organization organization that they're both involved in. I'm also joined today by my co-host, Diane Samples. Hello, everyone. And man, we did good today. This is a great uh, segue from our uh, Alliance speaker series this morning. It is. I mean, I, I can't tell you how, um, I think, Julia, we were emailing back and forth and I said, you know, HR is just hot right now. I mean, there's every, everybody's in, interested in talent, engagement, attraction. Um, and this morning we had our Changing the Game series, which really focused on the generational differences and how to leverage those as you're building your workforce and, um, you know, how you can bring out those skills and attributes and in individuals to really empower them in what they're doing within your organization. So welcome, you guys. Thanks Thank for you. having us. This is such a pleasure. Very excited. Well, to just start and kick things off, I would love uh, for you to share with our listeners just a little bit about your backgrounds, who you are, and then, of course, your local organization that you're involved in. Absolutely. In. So um, I'm proud to say I am a Livingston County native, born and raised here, uh, originally from Brighton, but then moved to Howell when I was younger. Um, and so, yeah, how I got involved with... Um, HR. I did not start out in HR. I started out as a teacher, actually. I was a high school teacher for 14 years. And the bug got me, you know, I started thinking there, there's probably more out there besides, um, you know, having the wonderful experience of working with children and students. Um, so I carried that and, and took on some consulting roles um, outside of Livingston County and really got a good scope in terms of what was happening out in the world of education. Um, and I shifted from moving, um, I shifted from working with children to working with adults. And that is, <laughs> that is an interesting shift. So if anybody's thinking what about age group, did you teach? I taught high school. Okay. Yeah. So I was working with 17 and 18 year olds, which it was a pleasure. People say, how do you, how did, how did you do that? I'm like, it was easier than, than working with seven year olds. I can probably tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I started to see how, um, as I was branching out and talking with a lot of different individuals, just how human resources became the center of all things work and all things people. And so, you know, Fast forward probably about five to seven years, then I started my role at Baker College and um, was working with faculty still in academia, but then I realized, you know, there's probably more to this. And um, over the past year, year and a half, really just taken advantage of um, working with all individuals at the college level from enrollment to, you know, facilities. And it's really just been a rewarding experience getting the chance to work hand in hand with people. And helping them see HR more as a partner than somebody sitting in, a, sitting in an ivory tower. Absolutely. It's key. Very important. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Perfect. Jennifer? So I did not start out in education. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Although I commend everyone to do that, does that. But uh, I, you know, I, in my undergrad, I did an internship at a assisted living facility within their corporate office. And I got to watch the HR department. And I was like, wow, I really... I like this. I think that they're doing great things for the employees and it just really sparked an interest. Um, and so I didn't change my undergrad career, uh, my degree, but I decided that that was the, the route I wanted to go. So I kind of just fell into it, but I've been doing it now for close to 17 years, um, probably all areas of HR too, right? So I uh, started as HR assistant, kind of moved up from there. I did some benefits. I've worked in payroll a little bit. Um, I've worked at a publicly traded company. I was the deputy HR director at Livingston County Government also for a long time. So hold that very near and dear to my heart. And then was given a, a great opportunity to go out to Grand Blank at Action Traffic uh, and be their HR director and kind of help uh, build up that HR department and and to kind of do what Julia said, like be that, that partner within the organization to help drive and grow uh, the, the employees and the organization as a whole. So that's the piece that I love. I, I mean, I, I'm very passionate about HR. Um, I'm recently finishing up my master's program right now at Villanova. And um, I, I just love learning and giving back, which then is a good segue into 
uh, why we know each other, which is uh, LARA, which is the Livingston Area Human Resources Association. And the reason why I got involved was I, I just truly love giving back to HR community, right? I want to spread what I know and then keep continuing to learn from others. And the people that I've been able to meet throughout this has been so beneficial because of that too. So uh, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Yeah. So what are your guys' roles within Lara? Because um, I know that, Julia, are, are you the, um, you're on the board and so yeah. you want to explain a little bit about how that's managed and run and what that looks like and yeah. kind of what, what do you guys do? So, <laughs> so just a kind of architecture of Lara. Um, Lara is Lara. <laughs> <laughs> Lara is the Livingston County chapter of a state chapter uh, called My Sherm, Michigan Sherm, which is part of a national chapter called Sherm, uh, the Society for Human Resource Management. So you go big right? National, then state, and then local. Um, and we're about 80 members strong mm -hmm. and um, started many years ago by very dedicated individuals who really just saw the same passion that we did. I joined in 2019, earlier 2019. Um, but before that, I got interested, you know, I talked about uh, making the transition from education to human resources, I took the credentialing test. So I kind of took like a backwards approach. Like I, I really wanted to embrace in the learning of it and then stumbled upon the local chapter, our local chapter, and realized that there were very, uh, there were familiar faces within the community and uh, sponsors within the community. And I went to an event and I liked what I was hearing and there was a lot of energy in the room, great speaker, and then decided, hey, there's an opening for a college relations um, liaison position. Hey, I work at a college. I love education. Let me see if I can fill that role. Um, so fast forward a few years, you know, the pandemic <laughs> <laughs> and really realized that I was um, gaining great rapport and collegiality with the existing board and really realized that this is probably something that I could do in terms of joining the leadership role. And it, it's been really rewarding yes. as far as, you know, I don't manage people at work, but I get to lead individuals that know how to dedicate their time and their talent and their passion to not just HR, but people in general. And that part has been really exciting to watch other individuals grow into their own. Absolutely. I, th I think that goes back to, to, you know, both of you talking about your career path and your experience and, you know, having that education piece in place or like having that mentor mentee relationship and, and being able to relate to individuals within the industry. Um, it really speaks to why you're in the role you're in. And then again, why you feel so passionately about Laura and giving back now, um, Jennifer, what, what do you do within Laura and how long have you been involved? So I, I was trying to think about that this morning. I think I started in right around 2017 as a volunteer role. Um, so there's the different aspects within Lara. So you can volunteer on a committee. You can be a part of the board. Um, and so we'll take every volunteer that wants to participate in things. Um, but I was part of the membership committee. And um, from there, there was an opening within the membership on the board. So I joined that and I ran that for a couple of years. And then um, then I moved into the, the president's section of things. So we have a three-year term. So you're um, president-elect, president, and then past president. So currently I am sitting in the past president seat and Julia is our current president uh, this year. So I will be moving and or retiring out <laughs> of my board seat <laughs> after my many years and I will still always support Lara and I, I, I love everything that we do within the organization. So definitely not leaving, but maybe just not on a board anymore. And I apologize if you said this already, but are you guys 100% volunteer driven? We are. Mm -hmm. Exciting. Yeah. And and I think what's worth noting, I know we're talking about HR and, and, you know, Jennifer and I work for organizations that are a little bit of a larger size. But when we're talking about Livingston County, we, we realize that there are a lot of HR departments of one within organizations with maybe 20 employees or 50 employees and some people that aren't even categorically, they don't consider themselves human resources, but they do the payroll, they do the employee relations, they do um, benefits, they, they do a lot of, they might call themselves office managers, mm -hmm. but we see those individuals as extremely valuable to be partners and leaders within strategic initiatives. And so what we, what we strive to do as an organization is really to support those individuals, whether it's 
a sole proprietor, right? Mm-hmm. That's just mm-hmm. kind of interested in terms of, hey, how do you how do you how do you reach other talent? How do you network with under other individuals? Um, so the notion of human resources, again, might be ambiguous to people or they look at it differently, but we see it definitely as an opportunity to be a partner. Yeah. And then to touch on that too, one piece that we, I've, you know, we feel strongly about is bringing those topics that are for those organizations that they just don't know about, like maybe a recent law change and help navigating that because it is difficult. Um, even I've done it for 17 years. It's hard to navigate and know what to do and what not to do. And I, Honestly, over the last few years, things have changed rapidly within um, different laws and policies. And to keep that all lined up together to make sure you're doing the right thing for the organization from a compliance standpoint, um, that's where we're hoping that we're coming in and helping fill that gap for a lot of the organizations. Absolutely. It can be completely overwhelming. And Mm -hmm. I think that's what we see a lot on our side, too. And um, Julia, you mentioned it. There's a lot of like these sole proprietors or, uh, you know, single uh, entities, you know, solopreneurs even. Mm -hmm. I mean, they still have to deal with the HR component Mm -hmm. of of their business, um, regardless if they want to or not. But they don't get into business for that. They get into the business because they're passionate about what they're doing. Right. Right. They're making their widget. They're doing whatever it is that they're doing. And that's where they're good at. So to have these resources available in our community is fantastic. Oh, yeah. This is a tremendous resource. And like we just said, it, it really, there is a place for everyone at the table. There really is. And then one piece to, to know, or every too, size business. Yeah. At the table. And you don't have to just be in Livingston County either. Mm-hmm. So we are the Livingston area human resource association, but obviously we're welcoming to everybody. You don't have to be part of Livingston County. I don't work in Livingston County currently, but I live here. i passionate about giving back to this community, but you know, it doesn't matter if you're from Oakland County or any of the other areas, if we can help in any way, even if you don't become a member, there's still those resources there. Mm-hmm. Real quick, I'm just out of curiosity. So you're the local chapter here. What what would be like regionally? Are there any other local chapters? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yep. There's a few right around here. So Ann Arbor has a chapter that's pretty close. Um, there's one in, it's Oak Mac. It's in like Macomb, Oakland County area. Um, and then Detroit and then Lansing. I think do you guys do any collaboration with them or like a multi-regional thing? <laughs> we do. Yeah. Actually, last year we had a really successful student driven event. So even more localized, um, a lot of colleges and universities have their own student chapter to really foster um, internships, job shadowing, mentoring opportunities to get into the HR role. Um, so there's a student chapter for SHRM is what basically what it is. And mm-hmm. so we've had some networking events and some rotating, you know, just network with professionals, for example. My um, my focus is on learning and development and employee development. You know, Jennifer might be more, you know, more leadership um, or more of the, you know, everything, all operations related to HR. And so within those different areas, we had opportunities for students to kind of bop around like, hey, what's your interest within those areas and get expert um, conversation about what the career pathway looks like or what the day to day looks like. And so um, that collaboration with um, the Greater Ann Arbor Sherm chapter was a huge success because (laughs) Ann Arbor has a few institutions that they can draw from. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Um, And so, you know, that that was really inspiring inspiring for us to be able to say not only where are we supporting current um, HR professionals, but we're also encouraging the networking with and aspiring or emerging leaders within the field. Which is so valuable. Mm-hmm. It really is. Um, so I also want to talk today a little bit about uh, some of the areas of focus of Lara. What are you guys paying attention to as, as it re- relates to work, employees, or really anything related to HR? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll speak first if that's all right. And then kind of chiming in. Um, so we made a lot of intentions this year to really focus on retention for employees. Um, and this was because (laughs) we could start to see where, you know, the pandemic had a great effect in terms of how people were viewing work in general, whether we're talking about remote work, hybrid work, working at all, you know, staying at home and taking care of kids, whatever that is. And so, Moving forward from that, you know, whether you call it the great resignation or the turnover tsunami, there are a lot of these terms were being thrown out there. At some point, that's going to stop. And you're really going to want to focus on the people that you have right in front of you. And I've always been of the belief that 
you know, even coaching conversations that I have with employees or leaders to say, what's right in front of you that you might not have paid attention to before? Um, because if you're always thinking about the grass is always greener someplace mm-hmm. else, or I don't like this part, there are parts that you're looking for that actually might be in front of you that you haven't, you haven't quite found. And so that helps so us from the employer side. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And even for people that were like ready for promotion or they like, they wanted something different, they wanted to grow beyond but they didn't necessarily want to change jobs. And because they had been working there for 10 or 12 years, um, they'd already built those relationships. I mean, the, the opportunities to change jobs are great and wonderful, but it takes a toll on an individual. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's kind of like a life change essentially. Um, so with that, we really wanted to focus more on like focus on the people that are right in front of you and how you can develop that talent through retention, upskilling, and even leadership development. I'm curious, um, and I'm sorry to cut you off or chime in, but I, I'm just curious. What are the responses to that? When you, what are, like, are, what are some common threads or things that you're seeing when you're talking to these employers? Or do they have like, do you see an aha moment, or specifically like what, what are they, what threads are are, are you seeing? Yeah. I would say, you know, when we have these kind of seminars, you see, you do see that for sure. Okay. And um, it's really kind of cool to see the engagement. You can tell by that piece of it, right? People are like, oh, you know, could I do this? And they ask a lot of questions and they're super engaged during the, the session. Um, and then that's kind of where this organization's great at is that you can network that too. Someone at your table is probably going through the same thing in some way, shape or form. And so then you see people that are not just getting up and leaving, they're staying and having conversations afterwards and then kind of building upon what we love within Lara is the networking side and building that collaboration. And it, that to me is the most helpful when I go to those things um, is like, you know, I have this thing. Have you ever dealt with that? Um, and so you see that within those, those sessions hundred percent every time. Yeah. To give you an example of what we've seen as a response, um, we made great intentions to bring on ECTO HR and have them do a session for us on crucial conversations. I mean, a really diluted uh, one and a half hour session and we had a great turnout from that. So think about it then from a retention standpoint, like why would that be, why would that even be relevant? Right. Mm -hmm. And the point is, there are times as a manager or as a leader, you're just like, just fire that person. I just want to get rid of them. (laughs) And we're like, stop. Have you had multiple conversations? And they don't have to be difficult conversations. They can just be conversations of feedback. Like, how do you structure that in a very safe way? No, but I'm ready to fire them. Like you haven't really gone through the (laughs) HR channels, if you will. So how do we develop the skill within the leader to actually engage in those conversations? Because you might find issues that you know, as a leader, you could have avoided or you could kind of remove some barriers for that person to be more successful and not have to go through the expense and the time of having to rehire for that position. Again, that person is right in front of you. And so how are you nurturing them? So um, Steve Williams and his team did a really nice job just in terms of providing a brief architecture for those that attended to give them the confidence to say these people are right in front of you, engage with them to really give them the skills and the, the structure to kind of work toward retention. And Mm -hmm. then if that doesn't work, maybe we have a different conversation. Absolutely. No, that's a great example. That's exactly what I was looking for. Thank you. And what a great segue. Steve is actually going to be on our show in a few weeks. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I'm telling you, HR has been hot. (laughs) Well, they've been an annual partner with us, an annual sponsor. And so having them come front and center and share their expertise and their talents with our members, Um, And you don't have to be a member to attend our events. So, you know, you can just kind of like, like I did when I came on board, I was just like, I just kind of see what it's about um, and meet some people and really kind of feel the energy of the room. Are these my people? Do they Mm -hmm. feel like I could talk to them if I really um, had the opportunity? And well, because so, there has to be a level of comfort and trust that develops and that you can cultivate. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you sometimes you touch on some difficult, I mean, difficult conversations during those, those meetings. So it is the comfort level needs to be there for sure. And I, I'd like to think that we make it fun and we're a good group to hang out with. We, I mean, we, every year we also have kind of like one or two, yeah. or at least one, um, legal updates from about issues that are happening in human resources. Um, one of our, um, he's, he's from the state kind of big chapter, but, um, he's local to Ann Arbor area and he comes and shares with us all these case studies about what's happening in human resources. And sometimes it's 
the wackiest stories that go to legislation or go uh-huh. to arbitration and the wacky I, stories sometimes are really relatable because like I, you, you wouldn't believe like we always tell <laughs> HR people like we need to write a book. Just in terms of you what, can't make this you stuff can't up. Make you this really stuff can't. Up. Oh, I can and, imagine. I, and I don't mean that to, to degrade any, anybody or anything that happens, but sometimes people do things that it's just like, I can't, I can't believe that, but it is real. It is real. It happens. <laughs> well, it sounds like this is a great sounding board too. We talked a lot about the the smaller organizations that maybe really don't realize all of the legalities that are involved in having maybe even just one or two employees. I mean, there's, there's those fine lines that kind of when you have a, a, a small business owner and don't really, like you said, don't have that HR background or really thinking about that. It's mm-hmm. not front and center that are really, um, the resources are here for them. So it's a great place to be able to come and just, you know, kind of learn and grow with your business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. I'm by no means a legal expert, but when you hear <laughs> some of these stories, you're like, now I'm intrigued, mm-hmm. you know, but I, I do need to call upon legal to really help me work through this. Um, and so... Yeah, talking back to the solopreneur or even the smaller business that might not be thinking of these things, HR's role is there to protect the organization Mm -hmm. and also protect the people within the organization. So it's kind of like we have to wear a couple of different hats in that respect um, and then to to really be mindful of the strategy of the organization moving Mm -hmm. forward. And again... We're talking, you know, one people that yeah have partnerships, maybe two people, and that still needs to happen. And HR can be really um, strategic in helping with those businesses move forward and thrive. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, I mean, like I said, it's a great resource right here local for really any size business. Mm-hmm. So um, what is, what are some other local partnerships that Lara holds um, with that help employees and em- employers? I'm really excited with, what Jennifer is working on. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm partnering with Laura, um, with the LESA and, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to, I, I think that it's great to give back to students too. And that's a piece that I've never really done. And I think it's amazing. Um, I work in construction, right? So that is a field that we, I want to embrace people to go into those fields. And this is a perfect program that they're, they're working on within the LESA. And I, I'm very excited about it. We want to help connect businesses um, with those students so they can see. I think, and she may have mentioned it, but the one, best one that I've heard is that the kids went into the Livingston County and then got to sit with the judge, right? Who, no one gets to do that. Mm-hmm. And what kid knows what they want to do when they grow up, but you only know what you want to do and you see it firsthand. Um, so I'm going to be going even to the, there's a huge career fair um, in a couple of weeks too that we're going in. It has different sectors, same concept, um, exposing students to these things. And so that's where we thought as an organization, we can help maybe connect those businesses to the students and help them with that as well. So we are partnering together on that and uh, very excited for it. So. Yeah, LESA has been a tremendous catalyst for us to tap into different areas of uh, talent that may have been overlooked in the past. And to, and to do this intentionally, not just from an employer side, you know, let's just take Acto HR, for example, and they might be hiring um, an HR generalist or maybe someone in business development within their organization. Uh, you know, how can we tap into or help um, high school students really understand that career area or maybe some competencies that really help in that particular area and then give them the opportunity to job shadow with an act OHR. Um, and that's just one small example. They are an active member in terms of the, um, the job shadowing opportunities that LESA has promoted. So we see as support for HR professionals just as a small portion of the, the role in terms of really developing and engaging talent, young talent here. Um, Um, but also to see how we can actually work with high school students. Um, One of our sponsors uh, and one of our members, Jessica Kerr, is really active with Express Employment. I know that you had Reggie on a few weeks ago, and um, she has really taken the lead from not just Express, but also Lara in terms of really engaging with students like resume reviews and giving tips and tricks. And so that's part of how, you know, that giving back to the community you kind of like do what's right in front of you. This is already part of my work. Mm-hmm. Why am I not reaching out to this young talent to give them some of the initial skills and strategies that are so beneficial? Like those are lifelong skills that you just never forget. 
Absolutely. And I think, you know, one of the things that we touched on this morning kind of ties into that a little bit too, as far as like being able to market yourself and, you know, um, actually communicate your value, kind of what's on paper, just even simple things to like your 60 second elevator speech, have, Mm -hmm. have something canned and and done up. And to be able to have some coaching on that is really, really beneficial. And like you said, uh, lifelong, something that's going to travel with you. And and one thing that I think too, that can come out of this is, is that that reverse mentorship too. So getting students in there and working with people who've been in the profession for forever, there is such value on the reverse. Like what's, students these days can teach us. I know that they can teach me lots of things, right? I, I just, I a hundred percent know that like they are just way more tech savvy. Um, and, and I love it. And I'm so excited to talk to anyone that can do anything like that. And I, I think there's a huge value in that, in this whole program and even not in this program, in any business, that there's a value in that by any means. Well, we were just talking about that after our Alliance meeting this morning. Um, I was talking with a couple who it's, the perspective from the other generations mm-hmm. is invaluable. I mean, you can have a problem or just have a scenario. And when you run it by, you know, I mean, I'm older. So if I run it by even by my kids to get their perspective out of it, it really, I mean, it's an eye opener. And you mm-hmm. do get those aha moments where you're like, oh, it makes perfect sense. But I just was never able to look at it through that lens before. So there is tremendous value there. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Uh, A few months ago, we had frontline training solutions come in and do a four hour uh, session for us on succession planning. Mm -hmm. And so if you have people that are working with you and for you of pretty much the same generation, and you're like, we've got a great thing going here. Well, what happens in five or 10 years when somebody wants to retire or somebody wants to move or, you know, and having that diversity within the organization is so valuable. And and when I say diversity, let's just go simple diversity of thought, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Not let alone these other areas of diversity. And so having that perspective to say, you know, we might need an individual that has a different lens or a different experience here because sometimes there is the tendency to want to hire somebody that's just like me or mm-hmm. like just like this person that we were replacing or, or maybe even the opposite of the person that we're replacing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, having having that perspective, I, I wanted to kind of go back on that succession planning, you know. Even small businesses don't think about that, you know, when they're like, okay, I'm kind of at the end of my tenure or who's going to take over having some of those structures and those frameworks in place. Like you're not even wearing an mm-hmm. HR hat. You're just thinking I'm, I'm going, I'm, I've got my own good thing going on, but you know what happens when this is over? Is it just over? What legacy are they looking to leave? And I think that's huge. And I do think a lot of small business owners are starting to think that way. Cause again, like you said, this is their legacy. They built this from the ground up. Mm-hmm. And I mean, for a lot of people, I think maybe it's the hopes that family will jump in, but when that doesn't happen. And it's also, I think, planting those seeds in your employees where maybe they never thought that that was something that was even possible for them. Like, how can I be a business owner? Or I'm not, you know, that was never on my radar to, to take over a business. And now all of a sudden they're starting to think that way and they're excited and it brings a whole nother energy Mm -hmm. synergy to that business. I mean, that's another area that we haven't, I mean, the work is always continuous. There's mm-hmm. always going to be something that's either falling into the HR box, if you will. Um, but that's a great conversation that you're bringing up is this idea of how, how do you as an organization, yeah, you might be hiring uh, new or young talent, but then they're like, well, after two years, they want to leave and go do something else. And then you have to say to yourself, well, could have I could I have retained this employee mm-hmm. if I gave them some career laddering? Like, hey, mm-hmm. let's get you trained in here. Let me help support your bachelor's degree. Or let me get, let me see if I can find a certification. Or, you know, really kind of supporting that learning and development piece mm-hmm. within an organization to say, I want, I want to retain. I, I know everybody in this room has somebody that, that it's, whether it's a family member or somebody that they've known that has really created their own legacy by falling into um, a mentorship with somebody else. Like mm-hmm. you taught me how to yep. do these things. And now it's not carrying the torch necessarily with that organization, but it's still carrying the torch. Mm-hmm. For sure. Absolutely. It all really great points. And I love the passion behind um, what you guys do. You can just really see it come through, especially when we used excited so many times. <laughs> <laughs> We're all very excited people. <laughs> um, and, uh, but I wanted to get to our last point here, which is uh, what other new and exciting things are happening, Laura? I know what we talked, Laura, we talked a lot uh, today on some of the things you guys are doing, but is there anything else that you can think of that you'd like to share before we wrap up today? 
Well, I'm really excited about <laughs> Jennifer's work with um, the schools, and, and that's just getting started. Mm-hmm. And I am uh, really happy with uh, Laura Celine. She, you know, she works with LESA. She is our workforce readiness chair, and that's a cha- that's a position that has not been filled for quite some time. So her volunteering and her connections are really exciting in terms of you know what's the future, right? So we take partnerships with. Um, with her lead, you know, in terms of LESA, but then also thinking about the other organizations and the other events that she's offering. And and that for us is to be able to share with our members and with, um, with the HR community saying, hey, here are some other areas to branch out into. And and so the young talent or the emerging leaders, as we like to call them as well, is another area where that's really exciting for our future. We're going to continue on the pathway of retention and upskilling and leadership development. That's not going to change. So we have a lot of upcoming mm-hmm. events. Um, some of them are are falling under that realm and some of them are really just good to know every year. So every year we do our active shooter training Mm -hmm. um, and every year year we have our session on like legal updates, Um, but really falling under this umbrella of, you know, how, how do employees and employers see themselves as partners working together? That's really kind of an undergirding message that we try to promote in all of our events. Um, Jennifer, you want to add something into that? Well, I I guess just to touch on the the volunteer aspect of, of our organization that we're always looking for that. And if we don't have a position um, that's available, that's on the board, we are more than welcome to entertain any single kind of passion that somebody wants to Mm -hmm. actually like dip their toe into, right? Um, If they have an idea that they want to bring up and they think would be beneficial to our organization and the the county, we we think it would be great and we want to keep expanding. But um, yeah, we're just excited, right? We're we're also (laughs) thrilled that people... People want to come and use Lara as a way, as a vehicle to get their message out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't mean that. And it's like, hey, I've got a message. You know, let me just. They see the connections with our same vision and with the community to be able to say, employers and employees are looking for our support. You know, what talents can I share with the Lara community? And you know, we mentioned earlier this generational topic. You know, we've, we've had those topics at our sessions and have been really insightful Mm -hmm. um and not just from a knowledge perspective but also from a networking perspective yes absolutely well that's really exciting (laughs) the the word of the hour right (laughs) um so thank you so much both of you for your volunteer work and what you're doing with lara i have to um share that i i have seen the engagement grow and the excitement grow around the things that you're doing i would say just even in the past two years it's been um just amazing to, to witness the, just from my side of things, the engagement that you're getting. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that we've, I've worked with, um, HR through the chamber and we have our own little HR group and there's a lot of encouragement to get involved with Laura mm-hmm. because you guys are offering so many wonderful resources. So, um, keep up the good work. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. We appreciate that and all of your contributions to this industry and the community. Thank you. We Absolutely. we always say that volunteering should be fun. <laughs> it should I mean, it really I has, mean, to be. Work, it has, has to be. Fun. It yeah. has to be. We have fun. So <laughs> it's important. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you again, and thank you for all of those that are listening. And um, until next time, 